In part three of my Proto Throttle video series, I'm going to show you how to program a Loc Sound full throttle decoder. As you can see, I have a few of my Intermountain GP10s that have the um, Loc Sound full throttle decoders. I'm going to do this a little bit different than my previous video. Um, I will be using the Loc programmer to program the decoder on these locomotives for a couple different reasons. Uh, number one, I'm not able to use the programming track on my layout because I was not able to program some of my uh, Tsunami 2 decoders because of the amount of uh, current that it took to actually write the code to the decoder. So I had to get um, a Soundtrack's power booster for my programming track. The ESU Loc Sound manual specifically states do not try to program these decoders if you have a powered programming track. So I can't use a programming track on my layout, therefore I'm going to use my Loc programmer and the software that comes with it. And I think as you see as we go through this video here, this is actually a pretty simple process. You do not actually need to have the Loc programmer itself. Um, you just need to get the software, which is a free download off of their website. You can make all of the necessary changes that you need to, and then you can export what the CV changes are after you've made the functional changes. So I'll show you that as we get through this video. Just a real brief disclaimer on a couple things here before we get started. The Loc Sound GP10s uh, have several lighting features. The number boards light up. Uh, these Both of these units that you see here have nose mounted headlights. They also have uh, cab mounted gyro lights. They have functioning marker lights. So there is a lot of lighting um, functions on these locomotives. Another thing you'll notice is that they do not have ditch lights. All of my ESU Loc Sound decoders, uh, or locomotives I should say, I don't have any that actually have ditch lights. These were all diesels that were probably, you know, produced in the 60s, 70s, and run in the 70s, 80s. Um, so therefore, I'm going to get a little bit creative with how I assign the lighting dials on the proto throttle when we get to that stage. Another thing that I'll mention, I don't have any other locomotives that have Loc Sound decoders other than these GP10s. So depending upon what kind of locomotive you're trying to, to program, some of the functions might be a little bit different. So just take that into account as we go through here. Um, but I think as you see how I do the programming and the ability to export um, the CVs that you actually change with the Loc software, the Loc programmer software, you should be able to successfully program your decoders. So I have my Loc programmer up and running. I have my Loc programmer module configured to a programming track. Uh, ESU actually has a great uh, YouTube video that shows you a step-by-step -step how to get everything configured if you go out and purchase a uh, Loc programmer. Um, the software is free downloadable on the internet. I'll actually minimize this window. When you successfully download it, it will give you this box down here, just Loc programmer 4. Double click on it, it opens up and it brings you up to the screen. So for my particular locomotive, since I actually have the programming module, I can read the decoder to begin a new session. If you don't have the program and or the, the, the module to do the programming, you can just go file new project and you're able to get into the uh, the CV functions without actually having a locomotive hooked up to your computer. So that, that's going to be the workaround to get past this. So, but since I have a decoder and my look programmer, I'm going to go ahead and click read data or read decoder data. And it's going to go ahead and pull all of the CV information from the decoder. Nice thing about this, it'll give you a status bar. I know you probably can't hear it on the video. I can actually hear a little bit of clicking in the locomotive uh, signaling that it's actually reading the decoder and then it's going to bring up this page. So there's several um, tabs on this page. First thing we're going to do to make sure, number one, that it read the decoder properly. Uh, the road number did come up as 8173. That's the locomotive I have on the programming track. Um, the only thing that I've changed on this decoder from the package or from, from the factory default is I changed the short address to the long address. So. Everything else will be uh, factory settings on this particular locomotive. 
one of the other things I would encourage you to do, and I'm going to show you a picture of it here real quickly. Um, Intermountain provides a um, instruction manual that actually has all of the uh, function keys associated with it. So you, this comes with the locomotives or for whatever reason, if you lose it or don't have it, you can access it from their website or you can, you know, check it out here on the, on my video. So now I'm going to go actually and go step by step from the Iowa scaled engineering's blog on how to configure headlights for the proto throttle. I'm going to go step by step. I will do things, like I said, just a little bit differently since these units do not have ditch lights. Um, I'm going to do things just a little bit different because of the configuration of the locomotive. But if you want to follow along with um, the instructions from ISE, check out the link that's actually in the description of this video. These guys did a great job of stepping this out step by step. Okay, so step one, we are going to make the directional, the headlights non-directional. So we're going to come down here and click on this function mapping. And when we do that, you can see the list of all of the functions on this particular locomotive. Um, the, what's interesting is, if you'll notice that F0, which is the headlight, it actually has a physical output of auxiliary 2 in parentheses 1. For whatever reason, on this particular decoder, the nose headlight and the rear light, I'm sorry, just the nose headlight actually has two auxiliary functions associated with it. That's going to come in handy here in a few minutes when we get to programming the dimmability of the headlight. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this where it says forward F0. That means that it's directionally controlled. That forward F0 is going to be the nose mounted headlight. So if you click on this, it gives you a drop down tab and you're going to come down here and where it says direction forward, we're going to ignore that function. Click on the X and then now you can see it's just plain old F0. So if I put this locomotive back on, on the layout, hit function F0, regardless, it would not be directional anymore. So whether I'm going forward and reverse, the nose mounted headlight will be on the entire time. Reverse F0, I'm actually going to, for the moment, I'm going to ignore reverse and I'm actually going to ignore the function because we have to assign this to a different CV. So for right now, I'm going to leave this blank. So function F1 is going to be the bell. Function F2 is going to be the horn. Function F3 is the cab mounted gyro light on this particular locomotive. Since this um, GP10 does not have ditch lights, I'm actually going to use the ditch light functionality on the proto throttle to have the gyro light set up as being the ditch light. So you can have either the front headlight on or the front headlight on and the gyro light. So to do that, I'm actually going to disable the forward direction on the gyro light. So now this will actually go to a non-directional gyro light. So if I have it turned on on the proto throttle or if I have F3 enabled on my um, locomotive, regardless of the direction, it will be non-directional. So let's get back to the tail light situation. Intermountain actually assigns these, uh, if they had ditch lights equipped, they would be function F6. So I'm going to reprogram this to be the rear light. So again, I want to ignore the direction and I'm going to come over here where it says physical output auxiliary, auxiliary one up above here where it says rear light one. I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to disable auxiliary one and I'm going to enable rear light one. Now I need to get rid of this particular, this whole line up here. So I'm just going to highlight it, click on this X and it's going to actually delete that entire row. So now we don't have to worry about two values for function F0. So now that we have that taken care of, we're going to go ahead and make the headlight dimmable. So to do that, this becomes a little bit of uh, kind of like on the uh, Tsunami 2 decoder. It really isn't a clean way to make the front headlight and the rear headlight independently dimmable. 
and I'm going to be honest, and this is just my preference as, uh, you know, me, my preference as a model railroader, I rarely, if ever, use the dimmable function. I know it's nice to have, I'm going to show everybody on how to do this, but I'm actually only going to do it for the front headlight. I'm not going to worry about doing uh, dimmable for the rear, mostly because I hardly ever have the rear light on to begin with. And like I said, it, I rarely have it as dimmable. So when we click on this function output, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, there's actually two auxiliaries associated with the nose mounted headlight. So if we come down here, if we go back up to the function map, we have auxiliary two one as function F zero. So if I come down here and click on auxiliary two parentheses two, I'm actually going to enable this as a dimmable headlight and I'm actually going to change the brightness from 31 which is full brights all the way down to a value of let's say 5. You can customize this however you want to. Um, a lot of this is just going to be trial and error. On the uh, Proto Throttle website they actually change this to a value brightness of 4. Um, but again, it, it really is going to be your preference on how you want to uh, manage this. Okay, now that we've programmed auxiliary 2 dash 2 or 2 parentheses 2, we need to assign that to a function. All the functions up to uh, function 21 have something associated with them, so I'm just going to click on a new row here. We're going to make this function 23. So we're going to enable that, turn it on. So now we have function 23 on, and I'm simply going to make this click on auxiliary 2, parentheses 2. So step 3 on the ISC website is to assign ditch light functions. Well, unfortunately, this particular model doesn't have ditch lights. But again, you essentially go through, um, I'll, I'll click back up here on function mapping. F6, they were directional, just like what we did with the headlight and taillight. You can just click on the drop down menu and make them non directional. So if you have ditch lights, you can go ahead and do that at this point. That's it. We've successfully reprogrammed the lighting on this particular locomotive. Before we exit out of this, the last thing we're going to do is I need to change CV values 3 and 4 to take advantage of the momentum and the braking for the proto throttle. So I'm going to come down here and click on this tab for manual CV input. And it gives you a list of every single CV, every single CV value. So right now the default for CV3 is 80. I'm going to go ahead and change this to, I'm going to send it up to 225 and then CV4, I'm going to set this to the maximum which is 255. Again, you can go through and change any CV value. I love it. This is great. It gives you the binary code. So like we said with the 8 bits, um, you can actually see what's enabled and what isn't enabled. So before I go ahead and write all of this information to my decoder, I'm going to come up here and go to tools and I'm going to show the changed CVs. So this gives me a nice list of every single CV that we actually changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this to the clipboard and you can just paste this into a Word document and I will do that and I'll post it on the video here. Okay, so now I have everything saved and I will uh, show you this at the end of the video so you can actually copy this down if you want to just go ahead and program it with your hand throttle. So now we just need to write the data to the decoder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Update decoder, overwrite default, absolutely. And now it's going to give me a status bar of the writing of our new CV values onto the decoder. You can tell obviously that I haven't updated this decoder for uh, really since I changed the uh, address on it so it has an outdated firmware. So the nice thing about having this connected to the low programmer is it will get the most recent firmware from um, ESU and rewrite it to the decoder.
The waiting is the hardest part. done. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go file, save this project. I just save it as the road number. So this is 8173. We'll go ahead and save that project. Let's go ahead and get the pro uh, proto throttle programmed. Okay. So I got my proto throttle up and running. You can see that I got my green light indicator showing that it's uh, connected to the system. So let's go ahead and we just programmed locomotive 8173. So the first thing we're going to do is select 8173 here. So I'm going to select eight, scroll over one, scroll over seven, three. Save it. So now let's go ahead and get into the configuration functions. F2 is the bell, which is correct. Uh, you'll want to have the sheet that comes with your uh, locomotive that actually lists all the functions and what they do. I have mine sitting right next to me. So F2 is the horn, F1 is the bell. The brake on this particular unit is F10. So we'll scroll up here. The brake release is F17. The auxiliary button which is this button right up here the nice thing about the full throttle decoders is it has a dry fold function which is f9 which is what i want my auxiliary button to be and i'll show you that here in a second it's really cool engine on the nice thing about this uh, the low sound decoders you only have to since the same function f8 turns the decoder on and off we're going to set f8 to engine on we're actually going to leave engine stop as blank Throttle and link will leave blank, reverse swap will leave blank. Here's where we're going to get into the front headlight, and here's where I'm going to differ just a little bit from what the uh, instructions on the Proto Throttle website say. So the front headlight will still be F0. That's what I um, what we programmed. The front ditch light, since this locomotive doesn't have ditch lights, I'm going to make this F3, which will be the gyro light. The front dim, if you remember, we configured that as function 22. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to function 22. Front ditch light or front dim number two we're going to leave blank. Rear headlight if you remember we made that F6. The rear ditch lights. Now here's where it's going to get a little bit interesting. I'm actually going to go back one. I'm actually going to make the rear ditch lights F6, which, which, which will be the headlights. And I'm going to go, I'm going to scroll back through here. I'm going to make, I know it's going to sound confusing, but I'm actually going to make the rear headlight button be F5, which are the number boards. So I can have the number boards illuminated and not have the rear light on. And then the rear ditch light function will be F6, which should be the tail light. And I'll show you that here once we get the locomotive running. I didn't set anything for the dimmer, so I'm just going to leave the rear dim 1 and rear dim 2 blank. So now I can set the functions for the up and the down button. Um, I know on the Proto Throttle IO website there was a question about switching between um, the, the MON function and then the the uh, the fixed functions for the button so essentially the first one is where you just you have to press and hold to enable the function the second uh, the the fixed value is you press the button and it and that function stays on so for the top button I am going to make that the um, the uh, coupler clank which is F12 so let's go ahead so you can see the MOM is on there The down button, I'm actually going to make this the marker lights just to sort of show you how this is going to work. So I'm going to scroll this. You have to scroll all the way through all of the MOM functions. 
So once you get to 28, now it goes down to the, the latched or the locked fun functions. So that is F4 are the ditch or the marker lights. That's it. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to go back out into the main menu. Click over here. I'm going to save this and I want to save this to value three. So you just use your up and down button, confirm save. So now I just saved 8173 to the third slot on my proto throttle. Okay, we have 8173 set, so let's go ahead and scroll into the engine menu and go ahead and toggle that so it turns on. Let's check a couple functions here. Here's the bell. That works. Horn. Okay, let's check the headlights here. So if we click that to dim, unfortunately I don't see the, the front headlight come on as dim, so I'm gonna need to go back and check the settings. Bright works. Bright ditch lights makes the gyro light work. Again, we didn't assign function to the rear dim, so I'm gonna leave that one blank. The right activates the number board, and then I'll show you here in a minute when I get to the rear of the locomotive, it will actually have the rear uh, headlight illuminated. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a little bit of throttle here. Bring it up to notch two. Again, air horn. Bell. If I want to disable the gyro light, I just turn it back to bright. Remember I said F4 was, this was going to be the uh, marker lights. Those work. Let's go ahead and put it back to idle, hit the brake. I really like the braking function with this decoder. One of the things I've noticed, you really have to make sure that the brake is completely released or it will not work. So let's go ahead and put this into reverse. Give it a little bit of throttle again. Just for fun, we'll turn the gyro light back on. Back to idle. Brake. It stops perfectly. Put it back to neutral. Just gonna check the function of my top button to the coupler plank. Okay. Now that I'm able to show the rear of the locomotive, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this all the way over to the bright plus ditch. And you can see that the rear uh, headlight becomes illuminated. So as I said before, one of the really neat features about these uh, low sound full throttle decoders is the ability to do drive hold. So I'm going to demonstrate that here real quick. So I'm going to put it in notch one, get the locomotive moving. I'm going to enable the drive hold, which is my auxiliary button. So notice the speed of the locomotive is not going to change, but watch what I do. I'm going to bring it up notch two, three, four, And let's put this up to straight to eight. So again, notice the speed of the locomotive is staying perfectly consistent. But I'm at a, I'm at a straight to eight. I got this puppy maxed out. Let's go ahead and bring it back down. 
and I'm going to release the drive hold. And now the locomotive is going to pick up momentum for whatever notch you had it in. Let's drive it back to neutral and apply the brake. So as I've previously mentioned, um, the, in my opinion, the proto-throttle was made for the GP10 locomotives. Um, you know, I am so excited to be able to utilize this throttle on my layout. I'm gonna be able to do a lot of switching, a lot of operations. I hope you found this video to be informative. Uh, again, I'm not gonna to claim to be any kind of expert on programming decoders, but um, how the proto-throttle is set up, the lighting functions that are available on these Intermountain GP10s. Um, this is, you know, I've obviously I've been shooting a video here, but I cannot tell you how excited I am, how the throttle works, how the brake function works, how the light switches work, the horn, the auxiliary functions. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful product. I am so excited. So if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to make comments in the, in the, um, in the comment section of the video at the very end of this video i'm going to post uh, about a minute's worth of the cvs that i've changed um you know again it, it's for the gp10 so just consult your instruction manual i would encourage you to get the local programmer software it's free download from their website from the esu website i'll put a link to that in the um, program description so uh take care happy railroading